Angie. Shape here. And I just want you to practice it on the geo board that you have in your book. So yours is um, 96D. All right, so this is the like shape. Yeah. This is but the shape. So go ahead and try it out. Let's see what you can do. So remember, in order for it to be congruent, you have to use the same amount of dots as me. Two, can you say in your hand? So that's three. So this is three dots. Yes. Miss Lugins. Miss Lugins. Yes. Um, here you go. Okay, thank you. Whoa. So just remember, whenever you run across this, it's asking for the congruent shape. When it comes to drawing it on a board, you have to make sure that you match the same number of dots, that your shape looks the same, first of all, but that you also match the same amount of dots because you still could draw the shape and it could still look similar. But if you use the wrong amount of dots, it's not congruent because that, won't, that means it will not be the same size. Okay. All right. Why is it so amazing? Because I couldn't really do it. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do a couple of things on the board. You can keep your books out. If you want to get the page ready, what we're moving on today, um, we're actually going to learn how to measure on today. So we'll be on lesson worksheet 97. We're not doing it now, but we'll eventually get to it. So if you want to get this one ready, lesson worksheet 97.
All right, so let's do a little bit of board work and then we'll work on the measuring. All right, so I have these double digit numbers here. I have 38 cents plus 21 cents. Okay, let's go ahead and add it. We'll just pull them all out and see if it's in there maybe. Kenley? Where do I start? Okay. Eight plus eight. Eight plus one equals nine. Uh-huh. And three plus two equals five. Good. 59 cents. Make sure you put your cents on. Next one, 44 cents plus 52 cents. How am I going to add this one? Um, four plus two. Four plus two. Start in the back. Four plus two is? Equals six. Okay. Then I go to the front. Four. Plus five equals nine. Nine. Ninety-six cents. Good. Okay, so just remember when you're adding, you start always start in the back and then you move forward to the front, add the two numbers, bring them down. That's your answer. Eventually we'll start to move on to subtraction. The steps will still be the exact same. No different. All right. Let's go ahead. So let's talk about 10 more than a number. So if I have 57. What will be 10 more than 57? It's like I'm counting by 10 with seven. So 57, what will be 10 more? 67. 67. What about 68? What will be 10 more than 68? That's one more. 79. Like I'm counting my tens with eight, so 68, 90, 78. 78. You had it when you said 70, but you had said nine, but it's 68, 78. 29, what would be 10 more than 29? 39. Okay, good. So just remember, it's like you're counting by tens with a number when you're adding the 10 more. It's the same thing, okay? It's like you're just adding 10 more to that number. Yeah. All right, so today we are going to start measuring using inches. We did practice with the ruler before, and we actually started, uh, we just started drawing line segments, how to draw a straight line, but now we will actually start to measure. So a ruler is used to measure the length of something, and in particular, we'll measure the length of the line, a line, okay? So we have two sides to this ruler. If you look at it, we have the top side, which is the inches that stops at 12. And then we have the centimeter side, which goes to 30. We are on inches, we're not on centimeters yet. We will eventually get to centimeters, but for now we are only using the inches side of our ruler. So there are 12 inches in one ruler, which means there are 12 inches in one foot. A whole ruler is one foot. 12 inches equal one foot, okay? So Dennis and Avaya, do y'all have your ruler? Yes? Yep. Okay. All right. Kinley. Okay. Right. All right, so okay. All right, so we'll start to practice measuring, okay? So before we start measuring, I just want you to put your ruler down for now so that you can focus on what I'm going to kind of discuss a little bit just so that we know exactly what to do when it comes to measuring, okay? Miss Fluden? Yes. Do you see my ruler? I do. Okay. So we have two sides to our ruler. We have the top, which is inches, centimeters, okay? So this is our inches side. This is the side we're using. It's important to know which side is inches because when we start to measure, if you're using centimeters, you'll come out with the wrong answer, okay? So this is what the word inches looks like. It's a type of 
a uh, way to measure, you can measure in inches, centimeters, you can measure in yards, you can measure um, in different types of measurements when it comes to measuring like the length of something. Okay, so like I said, we're on inches, okay? You're not, no. Okay, so when it comes to measuring a line, so I'm going to draw a line here just so we can, so it's the same way like whenever I told you we draw a line, but except I just wanna show you the steps, okay? So if you look at it, I have this straight line here. Whenever I measure, I have to make sure that I'm measuring the right length first. I don't wanna be on the wrong thing. So I have to make sure I'm on the inches first. What I do is the very first line, not the number one. You cannot start measuring at number one because you'll miss a whole inch. You have to start at the very first line in your ruler. Some of the rulers have zero. Some of them do not have a zero. If you have a zero, you will start measuring at zero. If not, you'll start measuring at the first line, okay? That's also important. Don't measure starting with one. You'll miss a whole inch if you do that. You have to start measuring at the first line. So what I do is I'll take the first line and I put it at the beginning of my line and then I'll match it all the way underneath the line. So don't measure on top of the line or above the line. You always measure underneath the line. I'll take, I'll take the very first line. I started at the beginning. I cannot start measuring in the middle of the line. That's not gonna be correct. We're not measuring yet in our book. So your eyes should be here watching me on the board and not in your book. Thank you. So again, you should be, you go right underneath the line. You match the very first line to the start of the line. You put it underneath. And if you do it right, this line is seven inches. That's how many inches this line is. So I just measured the line, seven inches. Sometimes you may have a line that looks like that. Same thing, same rule applies, okay? I take my ruler, I put it underneath the line, not above, not on top. Underneath, measure the very first line of your ruler to the start of the line, go all the way, match it, and wherever the line stops, what number it stops on is the inch, this is 10 inches, okay? So this is how we measure line, all right? So let's go ahead and try in our book. Let's start with number one. Just number one, please do not work ahead. We're only on number one. So number one, put your ruler, match it up. Let's see. Yeah, where do you start? This is inches. Yeah, I think you're on centimeters. Flip oh, it the other way. Centimeters. Yeah. Wait, um, okay, so there you go. We're, don't say anything. That's the wrong side, the centimeters. No, you're on, you're on the, you need to flip it, flip the whole ruler. Like this, we're on number one, right here. Let me see. Look. Okay, we're on number one. So where do you start measuring from on your ruler? Zero. The, you don't, you, so why are you like that? Yeah, Push it. the line starts right here. So where should your ruler start? Right Not on number one, your ruler has to start on the first line. So this first line needs to match at the beginning of the ruler. Okay, so if we measure correctly. How many inches is that? Two. Two. So number one is two inches. Two inches. Let's make it kind of like easy. Mm -hmm. It's good. And it's good for you. So we measure, so we have to take our ruler, match it right underneath the line. We start on the first line of our ruler, put it right underneath the line, and we measured whatever the line stops, that's where, that's how many inches it is. And so in number one, it stopped at two, so that was two inches. All right, number two, go ahead, match your ruler underneath the line. Make sure you start at the very first line. Not number one, we start at the very first line. Very first line, put that first line right underneath the start of the line. 
And you'll match it all the way to the end. Wherever the line stops, that's how many inches your line is. Mine is 12 inches. Um, you're on the wrong side. That's centimeters. You have to use inches. So remember, be careful. Make sure that you're on centimeters. I mean, I'm sorry, inches <laughs> side, not <laughs> centimeters. Oh, I already see the number. Yeah, me too. It's fine. It's she fine. said don't say oh, nothing. Oh my gosh, yeah. I know. Like, I'm not going to quit. Okay, Dennis and Avaya, how is that? Do y'all have it or what's going on? I have it. I'm on number three and... We're on two? I Dennis, how's it going? I'm not going to tell. Oh, you're on mute? Yeah, I can't hear you. I don't know if you're saying... Push it a little bit. Yeah. Oh, right. It's I know where it's at. Okay. You have it, Dennis? How is it going? Okay. Good. Okay. You measure number two? Yeah? Okay. All right. So number two, we measure correctly. How many inches is number two? Five. Five inches. Must have had it on the All right, let's go to number three. Measure number three. Oh, yeah. oh. Don't do that again. Sit three. down. Number three. Easy. Easy. Why would they do that? Okay. Why on you? That's, that's three. Say Why did, let's say not say the answers out loud, please. <sighs> okay, I, I already addressed it, okay? I don't need y'all to repeat me. I already said what I had to say about it, okay? Thank you. All right, so number three. How many inches would number three be? Three. Three inches. And number three is number three. That's 20. Yeah, that's not All right, let's look at four. Now, four, I told you, it's a diagonal line, but we do the same thing. You still match, put your ruler underneath it. It's just now you'll have to kind of, you know, tilt your ruler a little bit, but it's still the same thing. You go underneath the line, match the first point, the first line on your ruler to the beginning point of the line. The screen is low. Yeah, I can't see you. Yes, I did it. You're still a little bit low. Still low? Okay. I don't know. It, it may. It might be. There you go. That's good, I think. That was you. You had to turn yourself. What about now, Dennis? Better? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so if we did number four correctly, how many inches? Four. Four inches. Four inches. All right, then go ahead and do number five. Same thing. Get underneath that line. Oh, this one is a big number. Oh, I wonder what this one is. It is. Five. Five. Don't tell. Blank. It's blank. Oh, good. It's blank. Blank. It is blank. <coughs> I know what it is. It's the blank. It's the blank. I... Okay. So number five, how many inches? Seven. Seven inches. Good. Okay. So now we will start to measure in our book. So we will start to have questions that will ask us to measure the length of a line. So we're only on inches right now. We're not on centimeters. So just be careful 
especially when it comes to measuring, making sure that you are actually using the right side of the ruler, which is the inches side, okay? The inches side has 12. 12 inches equals one foot. A ruler is one foot. Like I said, we'll eventually get to centimeters, just not right now. So we're on only inches. So you always make sure when you start to measure, you take the first line of your ruler. Some rulers have zero. If you have zero, that's good. That helps you to know where to start. But if your ruler does not have zero, always start at the first line, match it underneath the start of the line, put it underneath the line, not above, not on top, but always underneath. You'll measure all the way through. And then wherever it stops is how many inches you are measuring. If you find, if you're measuring one time and it's like in between, you may have to adjust your ruler. We're not on half inch or any of that currently. So always make sure that your ruler is always starting in the right spot. So if it ever measures like in between two numbers, you may have to adjust the ruler because we're not, we're never going to measure in between. It's always going to be whole numbers, which are like one, two, three, four, five, whatever, six. Okay. All right, cool. So that's our math lesson on measuring. Eight, nine, and, um, no, eight, nine, eleven. Yeah, that's what we'll do. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our phonics. Miss Bluegen. Yes. Um, which phonics test is this? We're not taking a test today. Phonics okay. chart. Uh, this is I chart eight. It. Chart eight. Mm -hmm. oh, All right, let's I go over. Uh, yeah, chart eight. It's the old one. Okay, let's begin. T H R says third, 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 and three. A R is R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R says er, 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 and verse. U R says er, 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 and nurse. I R says er, 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 and bird. So I says boy, 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 and coin. O Y says 
So remember, we learned ABC order, how to put words in alphabetical order, meaning in the order of the alphabet. 
So what do we pay close attention to in order to do that? We pay attention to the first letter and we go through the alphabet. So I have some words here, some things. So I have popcorn. We'll look at the P. Light, we'll look at the nut. C, I mean, well, cat, C, and then top. Key. All right, so let's put them in order. So what's our first letter? A. So do any of our words start with no. an A? But we have an A here. That doesn't matter. What do I focus on? The first letter. Okay. So no A. What's the next letter? B. B and B. Nope. No. Next one? C. Yes. yes. Yep, so that means cat is first in this line. After C, we have... D, any D? No. E? No. F? No. Keep going, G? No. H? No. I? No, no. J? No, no, I. I. J? No. K? No. L? Yes. Yep, we have white, so that means number two. After L, keep going, L? No. N? Yes. Yep, not number three, O? No. P? Yes. Yep, popcorn is four. And then obviously our last one has to be top. So we just put those in order from uh, in alphabetical order. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead. Can someone give me some compound words? I know one. Remember compound words? Two small words put together to make a big word. Okay, compound words. What you have? Mailman. 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 Okay, Dennis. I know. Oh, I know. Binder. Say it again. Well, binder, not quite, because it doesn't have the two small words, like binder. So remember, in order for it to be a compound word, it has to have the two small words. So it has to be two separate words that we put together. Okay, a bio. Unmute. Spanish teacher. Um, that's two separate words. So it can't be a compound. And it's milk man. I'm gonna say that milk word. Man. Huh? Milk man. Okay, milk man. Oh, I Okay. Fireman. Okay. Compound because calm and how. Mm-mm. Seashell. Popcorn. Pop. Well, yeah, that's what we just did. Popcorn. Yeah. Seashell. Popcorn. One more. Um, Compound word. Fishing oh, words. I'm going to say fresh. Oh, I'm going to say mailman. I'm going to say fishing. Okay, good. So last week we learned homonym. I know it. That's when we have two words that sound just alike, but when we write them down, they are spelled differently. And when we use them in a sentence, they mean different things. Let's talk about some homonyms. Give me an example of homonyms. Okay, Dennis? Bye. I'm sorry. Say it again. Buy. Buy and buy. Like buy. Buy like buy something at the store and buy like goodbye. Two and two. Two and two. Two like are you coming to my house and two like the number and there's also T O O two. Uh like I want to go to. Okay? Okay. Hey and hey. Hey like hey. And then hey like hey for horses. Okay, Avaya. Um Let me use your sign since you're done. Well, your hand is up. I don't know if you were. Hi. That, that was, huh? Hi. Wait. Hi and hi. Hi. We have hi like hello and hi like I will fly. The plane is high in the sky. Okay, what are some other home my name? I know. Play and play. Same word. Um. Okay. 
C and C. C like, can you see with your eyes? Or C like the ocean? Okay. What else? Sound just the same, but they're spelled differently, mean different things. Uh, I know, but I don't know. Well, you just said one. No and no. Uh, no, like no, and then no, like I know what I want to do. I no and no. One. Remember we said pause and pause? Uh, pause like an animal has pause and pause like pause the movie. And one and one. Like I have one cookie left or I won the prize. Okay, so good. So these are examples of homonyms, words that when we say them, they sound just alike. But when we write them down and when we use them in a sentence, they don't mean the same thing and they are not spelled the same way. Awesome. I know. Right. Cuddle, as the name and cuddle language. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and move on to language, practicing some verbs. Ooh, I know verbs with all Me too. Yeah, I see. Oh, I'm not. I know it. Play verb. Yeah. That's I can blink high. I know. Oh, I, I already know. Swing. Swing and swinging. Can you stop pushing the chair? I see. I see, babe. She's pushing the chair. Stop. Okay, so let's go over the definition of a verb first. So we'll see. Let's see. I know it. Okay, so whenever I ask what is a verb, let's do one word at a time. So what is a verb first? What would I say first? Uh, a verb, verb is, is a verb is a, a, I know. Okay, Dennis, what's the next word? A verb is a person. person. Dennis, how do I keep going? A verb is a word. Word, okay, next one, Avaya. A verb is a word that. That, okay, Naraya, a verb is a word that does make does. Does. an act. I am. Okay, so what is a verb? A verb is a word that action. So we've been talking about action verbs, which are movements. So today I want to put some verbs inside of some sentences. And that's what we'll have on our test. Okay. Alright, so I can blank I. What kind of verb could I put here? I can swing. I can put here. I can swing high. I can jump high. One more. I can fly. High. All of these are action verbs. I can swing high. I can jump high. I can fly high. Good. Next, she likes to. What's a verb I can put here? She likes to jump. Jump. She likes to jump. She likes to drive. She likes to play. She likes to read. One more. She likes to sleep. My and Dennis, are you focused? Timothy will blank his hair. Timothy will blank his hair. Will brush his hair. Brush. 
What else can I put? Timothy will. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Timothy will. Some else he could do his hair. Oh, a brush. Wash. Wash his hair. Wash. His Timothy hair. will wash his hair. Is your hand up? No. Okay. Timothy. What is wash? Well, pull his hair. Huh? Pull his hair. Pull his hair. Okay. Oh, I know he Good. Is. Dad he will is. blank dinner tonight. Oh. Dad will blank dinner tonight. I need verbs. Okay. Dennis and Amaya, you didn't give me any yet. Give me some verbs to fill in right here. Dad will what? Amaya? Cook. Cook dinner tonight. What's another one? Dennis, dad will. What's another verb I, I can put to finish? Dad will I mean, blank dinner tonight. Dad will <laughs> Think about it. How? What else I can know. you do? You can cook dinner. You can. I, what else? I know. I know. I know. I know. Okay. Can you can you sit down? Thank you. Oh. Nothing yet? No? Okay. Bake dinner. Okay. Dad will bake dinner tonight. What else? Fix dinner. We can say make as well. Susie and Beth blank a picture. Susie oh. and Beth blank a picture. Susie and Beth took a picture. What else? Dennis? Susie and Beth blank. What verb can I put to say what they did with the picture? Susie and Beth. Oh, the bath. No, Susie and Beth blank a picture. You have to give me a verb to finish the sentence. So Susie and Beth blank a picture. You need a verb here. Made a picture. Made a picture. Okay. Huh? Created? Yeah. Okay, created a picture. You can say painted a picture, drew a picture. Good. All right, so this is what you do on your test. You will have to fill in sentences with verbs. Okay, there are many action verbs you can fill in these sentences with. That's what we kind of did. So none of them are like wrong or right. Now you want to make sure the sentence makes sense. You don't want to put like, I can um, eat high. Like that, eat is a verb, but that wouldn't make sense in this sentence. So you want to make sure that whatever verb you choose, it actually makes sense inside of your sentence, okay? So this is what we'll be doing on the test on Thursday. You'll have sentences and you'll have to fill it in with the verb. So what are verbs? A verb is a word that does an action. Awesome. All right, go ahead and get out your science and social studies. And then we'll Can we put up our books? Yes. Ow! Well, you need to push over. You're like really close to her. Okay. Um, right, they have some zip like that. That's not my hair. Miss Flugents? Uh huh. So what do ants do all day? Huh? No. I'm looking at what ants. I'm looking at what I ants do. Oh, what do they do all day? Yeah, that's, that's what we'll get into next week. But they're in their um hill doing different things in their hill. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and start with our science. We're on insects this week. Yay. 
All right, so let's go ahead. So this week we are moving on to our next, yes, our next uh, chapter. So we finished our chapter on animals. We've covered owls, turtles, elephants, ducks, and different animals, animals that hatch, animals that are born. So now we're moving on to a next type of animal, which we know as insects, okay? So insects are animals as well. It's just they're called insects, but they're still an animal. Um, they are very important. Some insects can give us honey, like bees, which honey is good for a lot of different things. Then we have some insects give us silk, which you can use silk to make things. Insects help trees and plants to make seeds, which they do. They'll spread pollen from plant to plant. And then some insects are food for many animals. So unfortunately, some insects are food for other animals like birds. So there are millions and millions of different kinds of insects that live in the world. Some of them we may not have even discovered yet. They live almost everywhere. Insects sometimes can, you know, they, they have a lot of good things about them, but some insects can be a little harmful. Some of them might bite. Some of them may sting. Some of them eat crops, right? And so insects though, all of them have a purpose. Every single insect has a purpose and a reason why they were created. Like I said, some give us honey, some give us silk. Some of them uh, help trees and plants to make seeds and some are food, okay? So let's talk about the parts of the insect, okay? So all insects, when they are fully grown, they have six legs. That's how you know an animal is an insect because it will have six legs. Now I say that because some animals, um, I'm sorry, some bugs that we look at like spiders, people look at spiders and say that spiders are insects, but they are not. Because a spider does not have six legs, a spider has eight legs. So he is not an insect at all. He's in a different category. So spiders are not insects. Although we look at them and think they are, they are not because they have eight legs. All insects will have six legs. So sometimes when they're born, they don't look like they'll have six legs. Some of them, when they're born, they may have more than six legs, but they are still considered an insect because by the time they're an adult, they have fully grown, they will have their six legs. So all insects have three parts to their body, okay? They have their back part, the middle, and then their head, okay? And these are their six legs, okay? So all insects have three parts to their body. We have the, the thorax, which is their back part. Thorax, they have their abdomen. That's what we'll find. Just... Okay, and then they have, we have the head. Okay, so all insects have three parts to their body and they all have six legs. They have their head, their abdomen, the middle part, and the thorax. They also have these, what's called their antenna. Now, a cool thing about their antenna is they use their antenna to smell. So if they need to smell something, they'll use their antenna to smell 
And guess what? Their legs, guess what they use their legs to do? To hear. hear. They hear with their legs. So that's how they know if someone is entering in a room or if someone is walking near them, they can hurry and run away fast because their legs help them to be able to hear some of them. So some of them can smell with their antennas. Some of them can hear with their legs, okay? So there are different types of insects. We see the bumblebee, the weevil, which is a type of beetle. We have the cicada, dragonfly, a beetle, and a ladybug. And now look at that spider. Is it an insect? It is not. Spiders are not insects because they have eight legs. They do not have six legs. So you cannot say that a spider is an insect. It is not. Okay, let's look at 80. How many insects do you know? So God made all the insects in different shapes, different sizes, different colors. Some of them are really plain, like they may just be brown or black, but then some insects like butterflies are blue and yellow and red, very beautiful colors. So let's look at the insects on the book. So we have the first one at the top, that's a fly. Everybody knows a fly. I'm sure we've all seen a fly before. Then we have a mosquito, right? Mosquitoes, especially down here in Louisiana, mosquitoes are everywhere. They bite, bite, bite. Yeah. Then number three, we have a grasshopper. Okay, a grasshopper. On number four, that's a bee, bumblebee or a bee, honeybee that's on the in, on the plant flower. And bees are really important because that's who helps spread pollen so plants can grow. Then we have number five, a butterfly. Yep, butterfly, look how beautiful. And we're about to talk about butterflies in a second. Seven, we have a wasp, or you could say a hornet maybe. Yeah, so those are dangerous, they sting. They sting, so you wanna stay away from them. They will sting you. What is a hornet? Don't forget bees. And then number eight, we have the dragonfly, okay? Yep, dragonfly. And then in the box, we have the praying mantis. So praying mantises are really cool. Um, they really help farmers too. That's why uh, if you see them in like a garden, leave them because they actually kill the bugs that eat crops. So praying mantises are really good. No. I mean, they probably could, but not like that. So these are the different kinds of insects. And like I said, there's a ton of other kinds of insects. There's so many insects that got created, but these are just ones that we're familiar with that we know. Okay, so let's look at 81 and let's talk about a caterpillar, how it turns into a butterfly. So caterpillars, they usually have, they usually have more than six legs when they're born, but that's only because caterpillars there, that's the baby. Eventually, when it becomes an adult, it will have the six legs. So that's why I said some animals, some insects will have more than six legs initially, but once they turn into an adult, they'll have their six legs. So a caterpillar will start its life as a tiny little egg. And of course, they have a lot of eggs, but they are just a baby. Then it will change into a lovely insect, which we know as a butterfly. So caterpillars, if you see them crawling around, they're soon gonna go into the cocoon. So you'll see them for some time and then you stop seeing them, but that's because they turned into butterflies. So let's look at the steps. So number one, the butterfly will lay their eggs on leaves. So sometimes you could see, um, if you're ever out like in the woods, you could sometimes see like, it's like this little white spot on a leaf and that's usually a cocoon. So just leave it if you see it. So butterflies will lay their eggs on leaves. The eggs will hatch into a little caterpillar larva caterpillar we'll see that for sometimes there's different kind of caterpillars there's fuzzy ones there's those that you know just kind of look like worms a little bit it's just their color is different then number three after some time the caterpillar will then go on a leaf and make a larva uh i'm sorry the caterpillar will make a pupa or a cocoon it can be called either one um it'll make that and so you'll see that attached so there's actually like an insectarium nearby here where they have a butterfly exhibit where you could actually see it how they make their um their pupas and all of that so they'll stay in there and during while they're in that pupa they're wrapped tight in there they don't go in and out of it they'll stay in there and while they are in there they are actually going through the process of becoming a butterfly and after some time after some days 
eventually it'll break out of the pupa and it'll come out as a butterfly. It'll come out as a full butterfly and then we'll see the butterfly will have six legs. So it is still considered an insect. That's why it's considered an insect because when it becomes a butterfly, it has the six legs. So that's how the process that a caterpillar goes through. And all, all insects do that. They'll lay their eggs, they'll hatch, they'll look different as a baby. They'll go through the growth process and then they'll become an adult, okay? And so that's how a caterpillar turns into a butterfly. Like I said, this is a monarch here on the, the book, but there are different kinds of beautiful butterflies. So really you can't determine how it'll look just because of how it looks as a caterpillar, right? Because look at that caterpillar. It doesn't look anything like that, right? It looks totally different, but they're all different and God made them all unique and they'll come out all kinds of different beautiful colors, okay? All right, so that's our chapter on insects. All insects will have six legs. That's how you identify. Insect has three parts to their body. Their thorax, abdomen, head, their antenna is used to smell. Their legs are used to hear. Um, all insects will lay their eggs. They will start as a little baby and they all eventually grow as into their mom, whatever their mom and dad are as adults. Insects are important because they give us honey. They give us silk. They help us make trees and plants, and they're also food for some animals. So insects have a very important job. That's why there's so many of them, too. The Lord gave us a bunch of insects, okay? All right, so that's your science. Let's go ahead and go to your social studies this week. So we are going to visit our neighbor to the north of us. So remember, we're on our world tour. We're on page 72, our world tour. Yes. Yep. All right, so this is our world map. So we live in North America up here. So we live in the United States. Last week we went to Canada. Last week we went to Canada where we saw Toronto, the largest city in Canada. We talked about the maple leaf, how they make maple syrup in Canada. They speak French in Canada, okay? All right, so let's go to our neighbor to the south. Now, we are really familiar with this spot, Mexico, right? Everybody's heard yeah, of Mexico, I'm sure. Mexico. So Mexico is down here. That's where we're gonna go this week, Mexico. Still in North America. Mexico is our neighbor to the south. We could drive, but we'll fly. Now let's look at their flag. Their flag is pretty different, right? Doesn't look like the flag that we're used to. It does have the red and the white, but it has green and it has the symbol in the middle, which is for, which represents Mexico. <laughs> so the people from Spain actually settled in Mexico. That's why they speak the language of Spanish. That's why they speak Spanish in Mexico, because the people who settled in Mexico are were from Spain, which is a country here in Europe. Spain is right here. It's a country in Europe. So the people traveled from Spain all the way to Mexico, and that's why they speak Spanish in Mexico. Now, of course, you can find people that speak English, but their primary language in Mexico is Spanish. That's what the people speak. Uh, we're on 72. That's Peru, that's next week. Oh, oh. Okay, so Mexico City is the capital city. So whenever we say capital, it means the most important city inside of a country. Mexico City is Canada's capital city. Mexico City is unique because it's not only the largest city in Mexico, but it's the largest city in North America. So not only is Mexico the largest city in Mexico, Mexico City, but Mexico City is the largest city on the whole continent of North America. So that's the biggest city. And we have some pretty big cities here in America, right? We have like Houston is pretty big. We have a lot of huge cities. Well, Mexico City is larger than all of those cities. That's the largest city in North America. So the people in Mexico speak Spanish. And if you, you could look at a picture here, it looks like a regular city, right? Look at the buildings, you know, it all looks regular, okay? In Mexico, the afternoon is the hottest part of the day. So Mexico is really known for being hot mostly year round, 
So that's why you'll have a lot of people that will vacation in Mexico because it's usually really warm. They have very beautiful beaches. It's sunny. So people will go there. So in the afternoon, So in Mexico, the afternoon is the hottest part of the day. So you'll see people wearing these sombreros, which is those big hats. So most of the time we'll see the big hats and we're like, oh, that's cool. But really they're wearing that to protect them from the sun. They have a reason why they wear those hats like that in Mexico. It's because they're so big, it keeps them shaded, okay? And they also wear these <clears throat> ponchos which is like a, you could say like a blanket that you put over it, but it has a hole for your head and it has slits on the side. So they wear those ponchos too, because it keeps them cool. The wind, if it's blowing, it could just blow through the poncho and keep them cool. So they wear those types of clothing and it's beautifully colored. It's, it's, you know, beautiful to see it and it's different, but they have reasons why they're wearing that in Mexican culture is because it's so hot there in the afternoon. They wear that to keep them uh, cool from the hot sun. So in the afternoon in Mexico, everybody will close their shops and they will go and eat lunch, which is their biggest meal. Most of the time, our biggest meal is dinner, but in Mexico, their largest meal of the day is lunch. That's their biggest meal. So it's a big deal to eat lunch in Mexico. And then they'll do something called siesta, which is called nap time. So they'll go and take a nap during si siesta, okay? So there are many types of cities. You have cities in Mexico. You also have small villages in Mexico, okay? So in Mexico, there are a lot of different things that you could see. Some foods that come from Mexico that were founded in Mexico are chocolate. And I mean real chocolate, not like the, um, like we'll say milk chocolate, like in a candy bar. That's not real chocolate. I mean like real deal chocolate that's made from the cocoa. That You'll find that in Mexico, real cocoa beans where you can make real chocolate from. You'll find avocados in Mexico. They were founded in Mexico. That's why guacamole, avocados, a lot of Mexican dishes have those things because avocados were founded in Mexico and also tomatoes were found in Mexico. That's why we have salsa from Mexico because that's where it was founded in Mexico. So three foods, there's a ton more, but three foods that we'll focus on that were founded in Mexico were avocados, tomatoes, and chocolate. These are three foods that were discovered, meaning they found these foods in Mexico and they shipped them all over the world. And that's how we hear about these different foods. Of course, in Mexico, we know they have a lot of Mexican dishes, tacos, nachos, quesadillas, all of those things are Mexican dishes. If you like any of those things, that's from Mexico. Quesadillas, tacos, nachos. Yes, salsa. If you like any of those things, that's called Mexican food. It's from Mexico. Okay? So in Mexico, they have a fun thing that they like to play with, and it's called a piñata. So has anybody heard of a piñata before? Yeah. Well, if you didn't know, piñatas are actually a Mexican thing that they, they do. They actually do it during Christmas time and birthdays. They'll celebrate Whoa. with the piñata. So we usually do it for birthdays, but in, in Mexico, they do it. They have a song that they sing during Christmas time and they hit the piñata during that time as well. And so we know a piñata is filled with candies and toys and you have to try to break it open with the stick. And so that's what they do in Mexico. So the piñata is not only just a birthday celebration for them, but they use it for a lot of different things. And Christmas being one of the things they'll use the piñata. Like I said, they have a song they sing and, you know, they, they hit and break the piñata with it. Okay. So uh, Mexicans also use corn in a lot of their things. One of those things being tortillas, the thing that you use to make quesadillas and all of that, tortillas. I mean, uh, nachos and all that, that's made from corn. You make the tortilla chips from corn. The tortilla um, wraps, you make that from corn. So corn is a product that they use to make a lot of different dishes in Mexico, okay? The children of Mexico also like to catch iguanas. So yeah, they have regular pets, but they also like to play with iguanas as well, okay? So that's Mexico, our neighbor to the north of us. A lot of cool things that we could see and find 
in Mexico. Mexico City is their largest city, and it's not only the largest city in Mexico, but the largest city in North America. Also, the afternoon is the hottest part of the day, so that's why we see them wearing sombreros and ponchos. Siesta is their nap time, and the lunch time is their largest meal. Three foods we found in Mexico, avocados, tomatoes, and chocolate. And they, they, uh, the pinata is something that they use to celebrate different, you know, uh, celebrations in Mexico. And yeah, all right. And the people speak Spanish in Mexico. So that's our social studies this week, visiting Mexico. We'll look at some pictures tomorrow of Mexico, okay? okay. All right. So that's it, guys. We've completed everything. Remember, we don't have reading this week. We'll move on to our reading next week. So just make sure uh, you have your books for next week, okay? All right, so y'all have a good day. I'll see you guys on tomorrow, okay? Bye. Bye-bye.